Hello everyone, and as always, it is such a joy for me to bring you the Word of God on today. I hope that everyone is doing well, that you're holding on to your faith, reading and praying and being helpers one of another. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter. We're going to be starting at that 31st verse, and it reads, Our Father did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and gives life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus, and as always, we're just so thankful for the reading and the hearing of your word. We pray that even now you will comfort those who are discomforted, that you will strengthen and encourage, that you prepare every heart and mind, even now, to just hear and to believe. And it is in Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Amen. Well, these words come about after Jesus went over to the Sea of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias, which is a fresh... Um, freshwater lake in Israel. And because of the many miracles and the, and the various healings that he was doing uh, of those who were sick and diseased, a great multitude followed him, okay? So Jesus with his disciples went up into a high mountain, amen, to, to just sit down to kind of rest. There, after just looking around and seeing the multitude, Jesus performed another miracle before them using five barley loaves and two small fish. Amen. You can reference that in John the sixth chapter in that ninth verse. The day after this, noticing that Jesus and his disciples had somehow left, they didn't even know that they were gone. The people themselves began to cross over to go up to Capernaum where they were seeking for Jesus. Now, look at this. Verse 25. It says, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, a teacher, when did you get here? And Jesus, he got straight to the point because he knew what was going on. He says, you're not here because you saw uh, the great miracles of the healings and all that was taking place. He says, but because you did eat, mm, because you did eat of the loaves and were full, your bellies were full. You see, Jesus knew their motives or their reasons for, I say, wanting to be with him or be around him. He understood what was going on. He, he knew that it wasn't because of what he was doing for others, that they just wanted to see or be around it, but it was because of what they thought he could or would do for them, amen? And this is important um, to notice because even today he deals with some of the same things. Many people follow Jesus, look, not because we have allowed him to live through us or to work us, work through us or to help us to grow and mature spiritually or develop spiritually. Not because we have faith in his word and truly, I say, believe on his promises. Not because we love and appreciate him for the sacrifices that he has made and is yet making for us in the fact that he died for our sins. He took our place, amen? But because mama or daddy did but because people truly don't want to what, go to hell. But because, I say, many um, understand that his grace and his mercy allows them, uh, I say, uh, uh, the chance or the opportunity to kind of, uh, I say, uh, flirt with their soul, amen, or take chances with their soul. Or because they understand that it's, it's, it's the physical and the temporal things that they can get from him, amen, or just saying that they believe in him. It seems like everyone has their reasons for following Jesus. And hopefully yours is because it is truly believed that he is, amen, uh, the way, the truth, and the life. And you can represent in John the 14th chapter in that sixth verse. But look at what he said. Look at what Jesus said to those people. He says, labor not for the meat or the food which perisheth, he says, before the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him, it says, hath the Father sealed. In other words, if you continue to read, it's almost like the people try to change the subject or ignore what Jesus has said unto them about the natural food. 
He was telling them, don't, don't be laboring for the food that you can eat. He was trying to show them something, but they kind of like moved away from that. And they began to talking about, okay, so show us how, how do we work the works of God? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like they almost changed the subject. But Jesus gently guided them back to what was important. He said, this is the work of God that you believe on him who he has sent. Amen? He represented in John, the sixth chapter, that 29th verse. And this brings us to the opening scriptures that we begin to read. It says that the people talked about the manna, or that, that how he said, that heavenly bread that God had given unto Israel through Moses um, when they were in the wilderness of sin. I think it was about two months and maybe on the, I think the scripture says on the 15th day, about two months after they actually came out of Egypt. Uh, so you can represent it Exodus if you want to go back and read it, the 16th chapter, the first through the fifth verse. But Jesus wanted them to know that that bread was not the true bread. In other words, the bread that came down from heaven, the manna, which God used to feel, feel or feed them naturally in their natural body, he wanted them to understand that that was not the true bread. Amen? He says that that bread was for the physical body, okay? Uh, but the true bread is for the spiritual body. Amen? That bread only satisfies for a little while, just for a moment. It might last you today and take you through tomorrow. He says, but the true bread satisfies eternally. He wanted them to understand that the bread of God is he which came down from heaven and gives life to a dying world. And this is so awesome in its own way because of the fact that Jesus Christ, who is the son of the living God, knew what his purpose was in life. He knew that he was only going to be in this world for a little while. He knew that his reason or his purpose for being here was to die for the sins of the world, to pay the penalty or the price or the cost that sin and death required in order for us to live. Amen? According to the scriptures, it says Jesus is the word of God, the spoken word of God. Amen? It says that he was in the beginning with God that all things were made by him and in him is life and it says also that the word was made flesh and lived or dwelt among us and you can represent in john the first chapter the first through the third and that 14th verse amen in verse 34 it says that after hearing all this the people said evermore give us this bread in other words, they were listening and they wanted this too. Then Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He says, he that come to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. See, you have to acknowledge your state of mind and your lifestyle. You have to see, I say, and accept that you need help, that you truly know that for yourself that there is a change that needs to take place what in your life. Jesus says, all that the Father gives to me, all that the Father gives to me, he says, they will come to me, and I will in no wise, look, reject them. In other words, if, if it is in your heart that you're pressed to want to make that change and want to turn to Christ, he says, when you come to me, he says, I don't care where you are, what state you're in, I'm not going to reject you. Amen? That's his love. Amen. So, but we must come to him, what? In faith. Believing that he is able and that he is willing. And if you remember the scriptures, um, I think it's in Matthew, the eighth chapter, it was a leprous man who went to Jesus. And he says, uh, Jesus asked the man, he says, what will you have me to do? He says, Lord, if you will, I want to be clean. He, he was a leper. And Jesus said unto him, I will be thou clean. You see what I'm saying? It's not that he doesn't want to bless us or give us or do for us. We have to believe. And I think a lot of times people mess up because of the fact that he says, if you ask, you're going to receive. A lot of Christians are begging. Well, God, I want you to heal me for this. I want you to, you know, uh, show me how to do that. I want you to help me to get this or help me to get that. In the name of Jesus, amen, you're going about your business. But what do we do? Lord, I want you to heal me. Lord, I want you to heal me. The same old thing over and over. You're begging. He didn't say beg and it shall be given unto you. He said ask. And when you ask, you have to ask what? By faith. He says when you pray, believe that you receive and it shall be given unto you. Not beg. Amen. And we beg. Why? Because we don't really believe. Amen. 
Just think about that. That's why we beg. But he said to ask, listen, anyone can come and say that God loves us. Amen? And that's true. But not everyone loves him. Amen? I've come to learn that it's all about establishing a relationship. It's all about spending time in the presence of God. It's all about reading and, and, and listening and believing, amen, that he is your life. In other words, the scripture says that Christ is in me and I'm in Christ. Christ is in God. God the Father is in Christ. God the Father is in me. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, he is my life. Now, he's not my life just because or just when things are bad, amen, or when bad things happen like loss or, or poverty or, or sickness. He's my life that I nurture on him. I feed on him by reading this word. Everybody understand that? Now, how many um, of you have someone that is uh, always there? Some people call them a ride or die. <laughs> Amen. Your bond and your relationship is so tight, it's, it's unbreakable. Amen. No matter what, if you say you need them, they're there. Same way with you. If, you. if they say they need you, you're there. That's how our relationship should be with our faith. Amen. We know that God is faithful. You know that God is faithful. But are you? Amen. We know that he's always there. But many, many, many times we find ourselves distracted, me included. There's so much going on, I'm telling you. It's so easy to be distracted. And I find that if I'm distracted too long, it affects my prayer life. It affects my reading. It affects my relationship. And that's the same way we even in a natural relationship, amen? If you're distracted, it affects it. So. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. That which, if you believe, if you accept it, it will sustain you. It will support you. Physically, mentally, it will strengthen you. Amen. And in him, the word of God is life. And according to his word, he is our life. And he said in his word, you will never hunger nor thirst. If you come to me, I'm going to feed you. If you're standing in this word and this word is standing in you, I'm going to feed you. You're going to get full. And if you believe in me, amen, you'll never thirst. So we have something that we can hold to, that we can pull to, that is a, a constant life giver to us spiritually. Amen. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. Why? Because he makes us whole. So I want to encourage you, I want to encourage everyone to just go back and read the scriptures again and understand what Jesus is saying here. I am your nourishment. I am what you need to feed upon. I am what you need to eat upon. I am what you need to nourish yourself. Amen? And see and notice that a change will come. Amen? And for those of us who are feeding or feasting, as I should say, on this word. Know for sure to that we can, as long as we endure, like he said in his word, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. It is our food. It is our life. Christ is our life. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we just want to say thank you for this word. We thank you for this message, oh God. We pray that you would just allow us to just Go back over it and look over it, oh God, and listen again, Heavenly Father, just to know for surety that your love is great, that you are faithful, that you are there, that you love us. And like Jesus said, if we come to him, he would not reject us. We're so thankful, Father, because in spite of all things, people are struggling. There is so much going on everywhere, all over the world. Uh, senseless things, Heavenly Father, taking place. But we know that according to your word, you are still with us and that you love us and that you are in control. So we look to you for whence cometh all of our help, asking even the more that your divine will be done. And it is in Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Amen. Again, we just want to say thank you for joining us on today. We ask that you would visit our website, that you would like, share, and subscribe. We pray that you would just continue 
to strengthen and develop your relationship with Christ. Remember, even in this world, I say as Christians, as believers, it's nothing that we can do on our own. We need him to do it through us. And that's why God sent his son. So I'll see you next time. Take care.